Γεια σα, γεια σα. Πού είμαστε, πού αλλού. Είμαστε στον υπέροχο, στο σαγηνευτικό, στο γοητευτικό χώρο του Trace and Chase για άλλο ένα επεισόδιο στο show το οποίο φιλοξενείται εδώ και είναι πολλά υποσχόμενο και απόψε. Ποιο είναι ο λόγο για τον οποίο οι υποσχέσει είναι πολλέ, θα αποκαλυφθεί σε λίγο. Κάποτε ένα επεισόδιο του James Bond είχε τίτλο από τη Ρωσία με αγάπη. Εμεί θα το παραλλάξουμε σήμερα και θα πούμε από το γαλλικό Κεμπέκ με αγάπη. Τώρα, αν πάει το μυαλό σα, θα πάει. Σωστά, θα πάει. Σημαδεύεται για να είναι μαζί μα ο Λίβιε Χάνλαν. Hi, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, first of all, I'm impressed because I know so many legends of international basketball who do not have sport credit <laughs> trading cards and you have plenty of them. I have a few, I have a few. <laughs> How do you feel? How, how uh, what is the feeling of having uh, cats and uh, enjoy uh, your basketball and your career and overseas, not only in Canada, mm -hmm. but also in the States, Boston College, yeah. and then in Europe, and then back uh, to the United States? Yeah, yeah. No, it's been it's been a it's been a roller coaster ride. You know, I feel like every every stop of the way, you know, you get a chance to get a lot of memories and you know meet a lot of good coaches, good players, and make lifelong friends. So, you know, definitely when you look at these cards coming from my uh, Boston College days, uh, you know, I have a really good moments over there in terms of the ACC tournament, uh, my 41 point game, and a whole bunch of other different accolades and, and records over there. So. Uh, it was kind of crazy. I didn't own any cards of my personal cards before coming to Chase and Chase, but uh, <laughs> they were able to locate some and gift some to me. So uh, you know, I just bring back some nice memories, and you know, it's been it's been a good ride so far, and I have many years to come. So I just need to keep uh, keep on going. Uh, tell me, describe me a little bit uh, your dreams and your ambition when you started playing basketball. Mm -hmm. I feel like in Canada, uh, where I'm at in Canada was uh, I'm from this place called Gatineau, Quebec. So it's a little more uh, focused on hockey. You know, hockey players, yeah, and there's a really a crazy amount of good hockey players coming. Not from lacrosse. Yo, not, 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 not lacrosse. Because uh, if I'm not wrong, lacrosse is the national sport in Canada, or not? Uh, I think. I think or it, it considered like a national sport yeah, because it's, it's traditional. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of traditional, but I think hockey, hockey is for sure like the main sport. Obviously, now you have uh, the Toronto Raptors, uh, you know, making some noise and stuff. But you know, ever since I've been young, you know, Vince Carter was a big uh, player uh, for me in terms of just him being with the Toronto Raptors and me having a chance to you know go. Uh, watch a couple games but I feel like you know whenever you're young whenever you're playing basketball obviously the dream is always you know playing professional on different levels you know obviously NBA and obviously uh, the European game has opened my eyes to a lot of amazing players and stuff like that so there's endless opportunities when it comes to basketball. Uh, who was the player with whom you grew up? I mean your, your idol, your, your dad? I would say like my dad was always and my brothers uh, was always like Kobe fans so We used to be Kobe, 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 but uh, in terms of just having the Raptors, the Toronto Raptors, so close to home, and Vince Carter being, you know, back then he was Air he, Canada. Yeah, Air Canada, and everybody kind of knew. Everybody still knows him, but in terms of like, he was kind of at his peak of his career, so he had a lot of good nicknames, a lot of uh, hype build up around his name, and whenever he would show up to basketball games, he would put on a show. Uh, if I will ask you to choose a highlight. Mm -hmm. Uh, in your career so far, it's easy to to select only one, the uh, unique. I think I think I think it's a little it's a little difficult, you know. Uh, back then with the national team, when it was the U17, we won the bronze uh, medal game at the World Championship. Well, so that under, was under 17. Yeah, yeah, under 17. So that was pretty in terms of just like the kind of the national level and just getting recognized for that. But also you have stuff like. You know uh, the 41 point game at the I think it was I think it's a record for you know the freshman with the most points in an ACC tournament so that was pretty that was a pretty good uh, you know experience and after that getting drafted and there's just so many different it's hard to pick one you know and uh, I feel like every X amount of years you get a chance to 
you know, create uh, more memories and enjoy that. I have a wise answer on that question. Mm -hmm. uh, my highlight is the next one. Mm -hmm. What it comes. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the draft. <laughs> yeah, I feel, I feel like in terms of, uh, you know, everybody has different, uh, you know, journeys to a certain point, but I feel like the highlight of most people's careers or just like one of the buildups, you know, to start, you know, you're going from, you know, not getting paid and just playing, not for fun, but, you know, college level is, you know, with schools and after that years in high school and after that, the goal is to get to that NBA draft and getting selected and, uh, you know, a very small group of guys, you know, I think it's only 60 guys that get drafted every year, you know, and there's, you know, a lot of basketball players in the world. So uh, definitely leading up to that, uh, it was definitely a special experience uh, just kind of going through the the whole process, you know, all the NBA workouts, meeting with, you know, general managers, different scouts, also the European scouts being at these places. And uh, it was definitely a, a good experience. Uh, you've been selected with uh, uh, was number 42. Yes. Uh, by the Utah Jazz. Mm -hmm. You had the chance to make it. Mm -hmm. So there was. When I, got, when I had got drafted to the Utah Jazz around this time, it was uh, 2015. Um, you know, a lot of people, like, sometimes people think, like, once you get drafted, you're automatically in the NBA. But, you know, that's not the case, you know, because it just depends on, you know, a bit of luck, the situation-wise. And I had gotten drafted to, you know, a great uh, organization, a very young organization. And I remember when I got there, it was like six-point guards or something like that. So, uh, so it was definitely a little tougher, you know, in terms of like the summer league and, and, and kind of making a, an, a, an impression right from the start. But in terms of just the experience itself and just being able to be a part of that, like in terms of the process was uh, quite amazing. Since then, did you try to make it? No, since then, I tried the NBA. Yeah, I tried. I tried a couple of different. Uh, well, I played a couple of different times in the summer league, you know, uh, I played with uh, Utah Jazz. I played with, uh, you know, San Antonio Spurs. So every year, it's kind of like a mixture of a different things, right? It's like, okay, you, you play good with the Summer League. Okay, you play good with your individual season, wherever you're at in the world, you know? And it's a combination of timing, lucky, performing well, and after that, you know, sometimes it happens, you know, within two years, three years, four years, and you, you sometimes you hear some, some, some stories like, uh, I remember the P.J. Tucker, you know, he was overseas for quite a good amount of time, and after that, ended up working out, and he's still kind of in the NBA now, and he's kind of like a, he kind of found his niche and his team and his role and, and he's striving in that. So You know that PJ Tucker plays for Iris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. One of the guys, uh, the, the gear guy season. from uh, Aris, Nicky, he's always, he's been there forever, you know. And so he's had a lot of relationships with all these guys. And, uh, you know, PJ Tucker was, uh, you know, one of the main guys, you know, coming out. And you know, if you look at him now, right, he has uh, created a good thing for himself. Uh, we'll be back to to the NBA uh, later, but uh, tell me please some reasons because you are here. I mm -hmm. mean, you are in Greece and you are mm -hmm. in Thessaloniki for a third straight year. But what do you like more here? I've all, I've all, or, or it just happened? Yeah, I, I think it's a bit of both, you know, but uh, in terms of, I feel like just in terms of European-wise, you know, the Greek leagues respected, you know, pretty well in terms of, I feel like whenever you're in a, a European league, it could be any country where, where you have a country where you know, your two EuroLeague teams, a couple Champions League team, a couple, I think a Euro Cup team, and after that kind of goes down the list. So whenever you're in a league like this, in terms of the competition and level-wise, you know, it's always pretty high, you know? And uh, obviously there's also different reasons and, and coaches, and uh, you know, especially this year with, with my coach and having our relationship from the past. But, uh, you know, I think Greece is uh, definitely- Yanis Castritis. Yes, yeah. yes, so I, I had a, a partnership with him back then, but we had a good connection and, and it's been working out so far this year. But uh, in terms of the Greek League, I feel like everybody pretty much respects it. And if you're able to have one of those complete seasons where, you know, you're winning, you're playing good individually, team success, individual success, it can create something really nice. If somebody asks you to describe yourself as a basketball player, mm -hmm. what would you say? I mean, who is Holy Hanlon? You know, as a player. Yeah, I like to. I don't know. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a pretty funny guy. Uh, you know, I like to. I like to be a team guy. You know, and uh, you know, I'm pretty sure you can ask a lot of my teammates. Uh, but in terms of just my 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 style of play, is you know, even since my Boston College days, you know, being aggressive, obviously scoring a lot of points, but uh, just just be myself on the offensive and defensive end. You know, so you know, sometimes European basketball can be kind of tricky with you know. Uh, 
having a specific coach that, you know, mirrors your game well and after that you have a good correlation that he lets you uh, express yourself, you know, the way you want to express yourself on the basketball court. But uh, I think this year has started to a pretty good start. You know, there's still a lot of work to do, but we have a pretty good connection this year. Uh, first season with Heracles, you scored, with Heracles, you mm -hmm. scored 16.3 points. Mm -hmm. Uh, the second was 13.6. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, despite your injury, which was proved serious, mm -hmm. and then all this adventure with uh, COVID-19, you scored more than 20 points. Mm -hmm. you, you don't find a guy yeah. who is able to score 20 points yeah. every night. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's been it's been difficult, you know, but obviously a lot of the credit. Because, uh, sorry to interrupt you, mm -hmm. uh, Greek League is uh, Defense oriented league. Yes, yes, yes. And I feel like after a while, you know, after after you're in a Greek league, let's say for, you know, half of a season, the teams adjust. You know, the teams kind of know your tendencies, know, uh, you know, how you like to play. And I've been here for three years. So I think a lot of coaches, players, and, uh, you know, they kind of know my game. So that's kind of to the player to focus a bit more on, okay, what are my weaknesses? What can I do more efficiently what can i get easy points at and just be just the overall sure so you know it's been quite difficult but uh you know this year with uh you know the coach and myself and uh one of the assistant coaches coach demetrius uh we have a really good routine before every practice before games and stuff like that just to keep all the all the kind of individual skills kind of tuned you know so you know sometimes i feel like the one good thing about the one important thing about european basketball it's good to do the practicing and the team stuff but you know if you want to really be sharp all year round you have to have some type of routine off the court to make sure you know you're not just getting okay the the, the team reps you know you have to get your personal reps and i think that's that has helped me uh, you know pretty good this year in terms of just you know being able to bring in every game and and, you know, we've only played, I think I've only played eight games, you know, so far. So there's still, you know, a good amount of games so, to, to go. And obviously with the injury and the COVID stuff, uh, you know, it's not an excuse. I think everybody gets injuries and now pretty much everybody gets COVID, you know. So I'm glad I got that out the way. Uh, if not in Greece, in general, uh, who is the guy, who is the toughest opponent you play against? The toughest opponent? Uh, in terms of not in not in just just in general like uh, oh, yes. I, I would say Europe Europe uh, I think obviously a, a, a pretty good name uh, I remember one of my first year like Spinoulis just kind of being what you playing in Zalgiris yeah yeah so when I play I play Spinoulis a couple of different games in terms of uh, you know practice friendly games but I remember even back then it's just it's amazing to to see a player obviously so much history so many accomplishments but just being so effective where you can still be you know pretty dominant uh in terms of sometimes you look at these guys you know sometimes you're coming over from the united states and you don't know the history of some of these guys right so sometimes you'd be like okay this guy is not if it's not kobe bryant or not these guys it can't be that good but in terms of just coming over and like you know them them opening my eyes and another player uh teo Jochis, uh, he was he was kind of amazing to watch you know and amazing to play against in terms of his passing ability and and I'm pretty sure he's up there in age also but in terms of a score wise I would say Mike James my first year I played against Mike James and you know whatever people say about him at the end of the day uh you know he's a terrific player in terms of just having to guard him one-on-one -on -one or just having to guard him as a team you know it's always a difficult night in night out uh, how do you feel because you, you know the story you are already three seasons here mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel playing you know, Nick Gary score mm -hmm. and watching his jersey up. No, you know, it's pretty amazing. I feel like every year, you know, you kind of learn more and more history, you know, depending if you're playing. Obviously, in Greece, is a crazy, uh, you know, basketball history over here, more than other countries, of course. But, you know, obviously, I knew of him before coming to ours. But obviously, when I came to ours, I started, you know, looking up, you know, more information. Obviously, the, the Internet, you know, you can find a bit of everything. But obviously, he was a insane uh, player you know super dominant player and when you watch highlights you hear stories and he sounds like a myth you know but uh you know it's special you know being there and hopefully you know we get them to one of the games and i get to meet him one day have you ever seen his highlights i've seen his highlights i've seen i've seen some of his highlights yeah he's that like i said it's kind of like a myth to me but it's like he was able to just be so efficient and so dominant at so many levels and you know, I'm not sure how many Euroleague 
championships he won, but I know it's like a crazy number. So, uh, you know, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy to, to just kind of hear some of the stories and hear, you know, during his time, how dominant he was and respected, not, not just in Greece and not just in Europe, but just worldwide. Yeah, yeah. He's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Well, Hall of Famer and everybody knows him, <laughs> you know, so. Um, how do you, do you deal with the pressure, the ambition and the high expectation of the club? I think, I think everywhere you go, I feel, I feel like it just depends on the player you are, you know. I feel like if you hold yourself to a high standard uh, and you expect yourself to bring it every day, you know, that's the first step, you know. But obviously playing in Greece, uh, it's a little different than playing in other countries, you know, because of the basketball history. Let's say, uh, uh, let's say you play in, in Germany or France. Okay, the basketball is good, but in terms of when you come to, uh, let's say, a sold-out Aris game or a sold-out Panathinaikos game and you see you know, the fans interact, you know, you can see it's different, you know, in terms of just, you know, the... You feel. Yeah, you, you, you can definitely feel yeah. it, you know, and obviously that's not just, that's not just ours itself, you know, there's a lot of good Greek clubs and a lot of good, you know, Greek fans, but you definitely feel it and you definitely feel the pressure, you know, but I've always said, uh, you know, to players that come here, even if it's their first year, second year, I feel like it's always better to play with a bit of more pressure in terms of... Uh, it makes you it makes you on edge, you know. It makes you okay. You can't be lazy today, okay. You can't be. Uh, you got to make sure you warm up good. You got to make sure you're locked in for the game, because you know uh, it's not just about you know winning. It's about obviously satisfying satisfying the the fans also, you know. Because once you when when you win in Greece, everything's good. The food tastes good. The nightlife, yeah, the friends, yeah. everybody's good. good. But once you lose, but if you lose, once you lose, it can turn into uh, you know it can turn into the opposite pretty quickly, you know. So. I think, you know, I think that's a good thing, you know, because, you know, you have good supporters, good and bad, you know, and it's, I feel like it's always, it's always a good thing whenever, well, without COVID, when you have a lot of people come out and you have that home court advantage. And even if you play away, it's always good to be, you know, the enemy, you know, you go over there and it's like fans screaming at you and it's not just, it's not just like people just clapping and being yeah. calm. It's a little, you know, crazy. Aris Pauk is another story. You, you're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say obviously this year was not the results we were uh, intending to have, but uh, you know we'll get we'll get another chance to get to him, and I'm pretty sure, you know, hopefully the COVID stuff is all settled. Not all settled, but like back to you know the previous uh, you know few months where you know we're able to have or fans, and obviously there's going to be a lot of build up to that game, and I think you know whenever you get beat up like that pretty badly, you know you need to revenge. So. Apart your family, your father and your brother. Uh, as you told me before, who is the the person, maybe a coach or somebody else who had uh, a very important uh, decisive impact in your career, in your life? Uh, I would say back home, uh, there's this coach back in Canada. Uh, his name is Dave Smart. You know, he's really well known in Canada and also other places uh, in terms of he's participated with uh, you know, some of the national team stuff with Team Canada with being an assistant coach with Jay Triano and stuff like that. So he's been with me since a very, very young age. And, uh, you know, cool story about him. He coaches a university called University of Carleton in Canada. And they, when he was there, they won like 10 championships in a row or not 10 championships in a row, but a crazy amount of championships. And uh, during the summertime, they would have uh, these exhibition games against uh, these uh, American teams, you know, so. University of Syracuse would come down, big, big, big clubs. And sometimes, most of the time, they would, they would beat them up, you know. So sometimes people look at Canada, well, back then. Now it's a little more respected, but especially like universities over there, okay, yeah, they don't know how to play. Uh, not, not know how to play basketball, but they, they, everybody thinks, you know, the level is a lot lower compared to, say, Duke or, you know, University of Syracuse and Notre Dame and stuff like that. So he was extremely successful in Canada and he, he got me at a pretty young age. I was never really able to play for his college since I went to Boston College. But in terms of my relationship with him, you know, throughout the years, it's always been pretty tight and he was the kind of one to to kind of get me to start, you know, taking basketball a little more serious, you know, at a very young age. So he has, uh, he holds a lot of credit. Uh, is any advice that might be the motto of your life coming from him yeah. or somebody else, I know. Uh, I think, I think, I think you're just living in the present. You know, sometimes people try yeah. to, uh, you know, think ahead too much, or you know, think of the past. Where, you know, sometimes your present or your future shouldn't ever depend on your past. Whatever you know, you've been through, and it could be basketball, it could be a whole bunch of different things. But 
I think if you live in the present a bit more in terms of, you know, whatever you do, you know, if you're, you know, a basketball player, if you're, uh, you know, a football player, you know, any type of job, if you live in the present and you focus day by day, getting better day by day, I think it's going to, you know, set you up pretty well, you know, in terms of, you know, your process, your journey and everything like that. I feel like sometimes, you know, life moves pretty fast and people focus on a lot of the things that people shouldn't focus on in terms of just focus on the present, enjoying it, working day by day and getting better. Tell me uh, a funny story. A funny What's story in your career. Mm, I'm trying to think. I'm or something to... uh, unexpected. And then I will ask you to tell me one tough moment. Yeah, yeah uh, I would say, you know, a funny story. Uh, Can we start by the other one, an, an, an unexpected one? I need to think about the funny one first. I'm trying to get a funny story. Uh, oh, one funny story. It was like uh, when I was playing with, uh, you know, the Austin Spurs. And I don't know, it might be funny to some people, but uh, we would, uh, you know, prior to my uh, Austin Spurs, you know, season, uh, you know, Spurs was... Uh, nice enough to kind of invite a lot of players to come for these uh, summer runs. So we get there, uh, you know, thinking that, you know, it's just going to be some five on five. You get to meet somebody, you know, uh, and you get to, you know, get some good workouts in with the, you know, the Spurs coaches, the Spurs trainers and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, once I got there and it was like my first guy that I kind of met and he was in the gym was, you know, Greg Popovich, you know, and you see him kind of <laughs> working out on the side and it's like, you know, you get in there and you kind of, nervous because you always see him on tv and he seems like a super serious guy but uh he was like kind of the nicest guy and after that you see somebody like i got to meet a lot of people just from the spurs like tim duncan tim duncan you know when i was there during the summertime i think he had retired two three years back but he still had his his like uh his game day routine you know and it was like he was not even like preparing for you know a season or anything like that but he would come in in the morning super early you know get his jogging in get his warm-up in and after that, he ended up playing with us you know so just kind of seeing you know, people on TV or seeing or hearing stories and after that finally meeting them, uh, especially when it comes to the Spurs, you know, you'd be a, super surprised. And obviously I got to meet, uh, you know, Kawhi and oh, kind of meet, not meet. It was kind of <laughs> funny when I got there. It was like if he was in, let's say the if he was in like the gym or he was working out in like the, this big, this very big weight room is like he was the Well, maybe it was just a rule for us, but he was the only guy that was allowed to be in the gym. Like, you couldn't get on the basketball court if he was working out, you know? So, kind of dealing with some things like that, uh, it was kind of it was kind of funny to me and kind of yeah. eye-opening how they kind of run it. But yeah. uh, it was definitely a kind of nice experience. The toughest, difficult moment? A uh, difficult moment. Uh, I'll say it's a difficult moment for most people coming from let's say, you know, the college level to uh, maybe not the NBA, but to the European style, right? Uh, I was having this discussion right before, right before this interview talking about, you know, the difference between, you know, the NBA and the European game uh, when it comes to maybe the NBA is a little more focused on obviously the greatest players on this planet, but, you know, some of the best athletes on this planet. And in Europe, you know, when you meet people like, you know, Spinulis or, you know, play against people like Spinulis and, Teodocius and, and people like that, okay, they might not be, you know, the type of player that would jump over somebody, but it's like in terms of X and O's, read and ball screens, like to the, to the perfection, you know, so coming, coming to, coming to overseas my first year, you know, and having to think and having to adjust to that, you know, is pretty difficult. And I feel like every year you kind of yeah. see it with uh, NBA players, you know, some NBA players are playing the NBA three, four, five years and they end up getting cut from their team. And after that, they come to Europe and let's say the things that they're used to doing in the NBA with the spacing and, and stuff like that is, it's a whole other story when you come overseas, you know? If uh, Dr. James Naismith, who is from your country, is mm -hmm. from Ontario, from yes, Canada, yeah. uh, never had an idea to write the basketball rules and invent the new game. Yeah. Uh, what did you do in your life? Uh, that would be, that would be, uh, Oh, yeah, that's a really, really, really good question. Uh, I would say even if, if, if it was another sport, I think I would probably try hockey, you know. Obviously, you know, most people would look at me and be like, oh, you can't skate, you can't do this, but I'm a really good skater. I'm a really good in terms of just, uh, you know, knowing how to, how to play. But obviously, it's, it's a difficult question to ask since I've been... Out of sports? Out of sports. 
lot of sports. There's one thing I, I love to do. I love to fish and I love uh, cars, you know. So I think it would be something with designing cars or, uh, you know, fast cars too. Or something in relation to, you know, car vehicles, car performance and stuff like that. But it's kind of a, it's a unique question since basketball has been, uh, you know, part of my life, my whole life. You know, ever since I've been, this is all I, not all I do, but it's been a part of my life for a very, very long time. You, you drive fast? Sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. I, I, I keep it safe, but, uh, you know, sometimes I feel like the adrenaline rush. Attention to the it, it's, it's something unique, you know. Obviously, it's not safe. It's nothing to brag about. But, uh, you know, you, you drive fast, but you do it in a safe way in terms of. Is that true? What Ball don't lie? I, hey, I think so. I think so. Ball don't lie? I think, yeah. No, no. I'm a, I'm a big believer in that. Ball don't lie. Obviously, sometimes... Uh, I think one of the hardest jobs in basketball is the referees, you know, because sometimes it's like whatever they do, whatever call they do, especially in the heat of the moment, they they get a lot of, uh, you know, pressure and, and curse words and stuff like that. But one of the, one of the sayings that when, you know, whenever a ref calls a bad uh, a call and somebody gets a free throw and they miss the free throw and you always say ball don't lie, ball don't lie. So, uh, of course, I mean. it's too early to, th to think uh, about that uh, because you're only 28, but mm -hmm. uh, will you become a basketball coach when you retire? Mm, I'm not sure. Obviously, you never say never. Uh, I'm not sure as basketball coach, but sometimes uh, I remember uh, last couple of weeks, we, I was watching a game against, uh, when I was injured against Heraklis, and I also watched a game against uh, Perry Steri injured. And, uh, you know, sometimes you don't really see what a coach goes through, you know, throughout the game, you know? And, uh, It's my, it was probably my first time being injured in my whole career. I've never, knock on wood, I've never got injured in college <laughs> or high school or I've never really missed a game. So it was my first time kind of not being able to play basketball and just being on the sidelines. So just seeing, you know, Giannis, a uh, coach, you know, especially the Eraclis game, you see him sweating, you see him like it's like constant stress, you know. So sometimes I was like, I was on the bench and I was like, even after the game, uh, I felt like I, I did a workout, you know, and I was like, oh, it's a lot less stressful being out there and playing. So sometimes seeing coaches, man, and what they have to go through and most of them have all white hairs and stuff like that and not too old. So it's definitely something to think about before getting into it. But I'll definitely want to be something apart, uh, you know, with, with the game of basketball. Do you keep connections or even friendship with uh, NBA guys or? Uh, you know, you know, over the years, over the years, I've, uh, I've met, uh, You know, a lot of different basketball players, you know, through, you know, Team Canada, where I remember the U-17 team was, you know, Andrew Wiggins, Anthony Bennett, uh, you know, Kevin Pangos is in the NBA now. So just every year, it's like you get a chance to meet a whole bunch of different players. But in terms of like day-to-day -day or weekly connection, no. But in terms of, you know, whenever you bump into somebody and the basketball world is pretty small, even if it's Europe or, or, or United States. So whenever you bump into somebody it's like you you, you spoke you spoken yesterday you know so I have a lot of friends you know all over the place and when it comes to basketball but sometimes you get caught up in you know what you're going through day to day and stuff like that you don't get a chance to kind of reach out to these people as often as uh, you would like name a basketball player you would like to have social relationships because you like him as a person mm -hmm. not As a player, yeah. Uh, let me see. Let me see. I would think one guy I would love to work out with Steph Curry. You know, just kind of seeing like, okay, the basketball is amazing, what he's done. But in terms, of, I think he's not just the MVP like on the court. He's also like an MVP off the court in terms of just the way he carries himself. You know, so I think with with, with uh, individuals like that, just seeing how professional they are. And uh, I would love to have some type of connection with him and just see what his like his day to day, his routine and stuff like that. And just seeing what is his what is his, uh, you know, mindset off the court. And also another guy, obviously, uh, you know, Kobe Bryant, obviously he's not with us today anymore, but uh, he was my favorite player for a long time. And just, uh, you know, besides the basketball stuff, just this whole uh, activity and activity, life. but just the, just the mental side of Meta. his approach, you know, is, mamba mentality. Yeah, mamba, mamba mentality. But obviously, you hear stories and stuff like that. But if you would get to, a chance to sit down and really kind of, you know, break down how did how how does he think? How does he process information? You know, how does he react to things and kind of 
I feel like there's so many people you can kind of pick their brain and kind of, you know, take something and, you know, better yourself in, in a way. So I think I have those two, those two players in mind. Uh, do you see Yanis a kind of phenomenon? Yes, I the think... The way he plays, the way he dominates the mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, Giannis is, is... The thing that people forget about Giannis is he, he, he's still very young, you know what I'm saying? He's not like... I don't know, I think Curry's 33 going on 34. I think KD's up there in age also, but Giannis is, is, is a lot seven. younger than even LeBron James and stuff like that, but he's so dominant, you know? So the one, the one amazing thing about Giannis first is, you know, his personal story, you know, how he was brought up and stuff, and it's amazing what he's been able to accomplish so far. But in terms of his dominance, man, it's like if he, if he finds a way to figure out like, uh, you know, more consistent three point and jump shot, you know, I don't, don't kind of see how you can stop a player like that, you know, in terms of, I know he fixed his, you know, his, his free throw stuff. He's a lot more consistent this year. And that was one of his, not downfall, but one of his, uh, you know, flaws in his games, you know, the previous year. But I feel like every year for the past X amount of years, he adds something, he adds something. So I think it's, it's special to see, you know, what he's been able to accomplish so far and he's able to he has a long way to go, and uh, I think everybody's kind of enjoying his process. Who's your uh, favorite team in the NBA right now? Yeah, right now, my favorite team in the NBA, uh, I would say Golden State. Not because I've been a Golden State fan forever, but just in terms of what Steph Curry's been able to accomplish with uh, the roster he has, you know? Sometimes you see... The last couple of years, you see a lot of NBA rosters where it's like, it's a teaming up of things, right? It's like, okay, yo, you come play with me. And after that, we join, we make a super team and stuff. Okay, they still have a pretty good group of guys. But uh, in terms of what Steph Curry has been able to do with the group he has so far, and now you're adding Clay, uh, it seems like uh, they're really looking like a championship league, uh, you know, team. And I don't think people have uh, been uh, expecting that from him. And one of my... You know, good friends, Andrew Wiggins, been having his, I think, his, his you know best what? year. Of his Andrew career. Wiggins' father played in Greece for many years. Yes, yeah, in yeah. Four different teams. Yeah, and He yeah. was unbelievable the way he yeah. was like a snake. Yeah, yeah. No, I think, I think he, he, he comes from a family. Uh, even when I was 17, when I was 17 years old, and I think he was 14, he was playing on that U-17 team. And he was so young, but it was like, I remember we were playing against Team USA. Uh, and, and also his mother was a gold medalist in Olympic Games, Marita Payne. Yeah, they're super, super athletic. Yeah. But when we were playing, he was, I think he was 14. And we were playing against Team USA. And Team USA, I think the whole team is in the NBA. They had uh, Andrew, uh, and, uh, Andre Drummond. They had Bradley Beal, uh, Quinn Cook, Michael Carter, Gil Chris. Uh, they had so many, so many, so many guys. And sometimes he would like, sometimes the one funny thing he would do, he would attack and he would jump and he'd be so athletic. And he would be like, he would jump and he'd be surprised how high he was. And after that, when he was in, the, when he was in so high, he would decide, okay, do I want to dunk it? Do I want to lay it up? But, you know, from an early age, he's been so dominant. But, uh, you know, even if you look at his career, the first couple years in the league, obviously he was still producing at a high level. But I think this year is like the year he put all the pieces together. And after that, you add that to the Golden State success. I think he's helping out uh, the team for sure. Better team that will win the championship. Team that will win the championship. I think that right now the two the two teams that I've been watching, I don't get a chance to watch too too many games because it's so late over here. You know, sometimes you get lucky on Sunday nights. But uh, you know, I've I've watched you know Golden State play really well. I watched the Phoenix Suns play well, really well. But I think I still think that if the Brooklyn Nets, with everything that's happening with Kyrie and stuff, eventually kind of figured out where. You know, they can all play at the same time and they can all mesh. I think it's difficult to beat them. You know, obviously last year was a unique year with, uh, I think he was the people injured and, and stuff like that. But it's hard to just look at the roster. And if you, you know basketball, you know, okay, Kevin Durant is probably playing. He's the best player in the NBA in terms of just his effectiveness. And you can't really stop him. And after that, obviously Kyrie's been having his, his own situation. But, you know, obviously if he can figure it out, and uh, the NBA can figure out where he can play a bit more consistently. I know he playing, he's playing away games now, but uh, and after that you have James Harden. And after that, I think if you put all those pieces together at the right time, I think it's tough to beat a team like that in a uh, seven-game series. So I, I would go with that. 
Uh, my last question is, uh, what tell me uh, an ambition, a target, a dream mm -hmm. you didn't accomplish yet? I didn't accomplish yet. I would say, well, I think, I think the clear one is, uh, you know, the NBA, you know, so I think for every player, you know, sometimes I, I talk to, I have, I have these interviews with uh, some of these basketball people and it could be, you know, beginning of the season, it can be like, all right, what is your goals for the season, you know? And I've always been confused with that question because I, I don't care if you're the first team or you're the middle team or you're the last team. Your, your goals for a season should always be win as many games as possible, get to the playoffs, and try to win a championship, you know. Obviously, if it could be more realistic than, than not, you know, but that should be the mentality with everything, you know. So, you know, as long as I play, you know, basketball, your goal should be the same. Obviously, playing at the highest level, some people might be... Uh, you know, making it to the professional level. Some people might be, you know, obviously the EuroLeague level is, is something that obviously I have my eyes on, but also the NBA, you know. So even if it's after the first year, second year, you know, even if you don't figure it out in the first couple of years, you know, you just have to keep it with that mindset and just keep going every day. And I feel like, you know, if the if, if your cards play right and you get a bit of luckiness, if you get a little lucky and, and timing, good season and everything kind of clicks, you know, you never know what can happen. So those are... Those are the goals that I have. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Uh, and I wish you the next time that you will come here to get more cars. Get more cars, get, get, get some better cars. That's, that's the goal, get, get some better cars. All the best. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Take care. Thank you. This was Ori Hanlan. It was our pleasure. And a very big pleasure time we had to introduce him here on this show of Trace and Chase. Ραντεβού την επόμενη φορά στο επόμενο επεισόδιο εδώ στο show του Trace and Chase.